Hello, my name is Claire Owen-Jones and I'm the Senior Accounts Technician here at Loud & Clear Accounting. Um, this is just a short video to show you how to do um, a bank reconciliation on Excel. Uh, if you ever want to you know, attempt to reduce your accountancy fees, then uh, doing a bank reconciliation is really the best place to start. Um, I always describe it as being like the heart of your accounts it's the first thing your accountant will do when you give them all your records so if you can get that um, done for them or at least um, you know the basic structure of it done for them then it's going to save them a massive amount of time so what I normally start doing is um, setting up a control account um, I've done a bit of a mock bank statement on here um, you'll see I've got it um, on every page obviously you would have a paper copy or or a downloaded one. Um, you only need to set up um, three tabs on your Excel. Um, I've called mine Control Account and then simply Money In and Money Out. So we start it off. If I just type in Open and Balance, then we've got Money In, Money Out, and then our Closing Balance nice and easy. So your opening balance, as we've got on this bank statement, is 3,413.57. Um, obviously, if isn't, you're starting this off as a new company, yours is going to be zero. Um, you know, so basically, you just try and take it from the first stage of your, um, on your bank statement there. So if your accountant's done your records up to say the 31st of March, if you start it on the 1st of April, have a look at your accounts, try and make sure that the, the balances match because otherwise your accountant's going to be trying to figure out what the difference is. But, um, but yes, yeah, so on this one, we've just taken it straight from the bank account. I'll do a nice little auto sum on there. And then if I do, uh, let's do it per bank statement. so we can see from ours that our closing bank statement is going to be the 10,58.25. And uh, if it's doing a little difference, that one minus this. There's probably way quicker ways of doing these um, sums on Excel, but I'd like to do everything the long way around. So that's just going to be our, um, our control account. So obviously I haven't put any money going in or m any money going out at the moment. So we know that there's going to be a movement of this 6,844. So hopefully when we've completed this, the difference will be zero. So if we're starting with our money out, uh, if we just start up some simple columns, which we do the date, detail, and the total. And then because we're doing money in, we can see we've got our first receipt, which is on September. And then we know it's our NHS contract. And then we've got a deposit. Obviously with these, your accountant will probably ask you what that's for. So the advantage of you doing the bank's um, reconciliation yourself is that you'll know. So that's probably just gonna be general monies paid in, your patient charges, it might even be private fees. So if I just put it down to private fees. I won't put private income because it, it might look like it's your own money. There we go. Obviously you'll be doing more than three days worth but um, you know we'll keep it nice and simple for me. So we total that up and then we have our money in. If I do my equal sign there. So we've got that now fed through. And then we do exactly the same with the money out. I've given myself a couple more entries to put in here. So give these a title as well. Keep it all tidy. I just put transfer for now. Obviously, um, if you put the um, the numbers on there, just so they know, because I mean, you may have um, a couple of um, 
different business accounts that you're transferring to it may be your own money going out and again if you know what the checks for if you write it on there because otherwise your accountant's going to ask um, so hopefully not many of you use checks anymore they are a bit of a bind from your accountant's point of view just because so often you know odd stubs go missing and and whatever and so it's probably irritating for you as well when your accountant goes I can't find you know check number 74 do you know where that bank stub is and you're sort of you end up sort of thinking well this was in last year's records or I wish I was a quicker typer. So, so that's cash. Um, if you know whether you've withdrawn that for petty cash, then probably petty, petty cash, then write that on there. Otherwise, they might assume that that's money you've taken out for yourself. So I'll highlight that for petty cash. And then I hope this is my last one. And then we total that, and then if all goes well, that should balance. There we go, phew. So we know now that we've balanced the bank, so there's no difference. So when your accountant comes to do your records, they know that you've included all your money in and all your money out. Um, and then probably the best thing to do as well, just to help, it, help them out, is to start analysing out the, the figures as well. So, it's just a case of doing all your your columns. So, if you had um, money you'd paid in, you might want to put capital introduced or something. Um, if there was any kind of refunds as well, you would continue doing your columns there. Obviously, you'd tidy that up. I'd keep that, kept that a bit messy. Um, would be in Q because that's quite a high amount your accountant might ask you whether that's you know a capital expenditure or, or stuff so you might want to put a bit more information on there I mean that could have been if you were redecorating your reception area or something like that so As you can tell from me going silent, I'm not very good at multitasking. So it's simply a case of just making your way down and analysing them out. I mean, that's what we have to do when when you give us our records. I mean, the joy of using Xero and all these cloud-based ones like that is that it automatically feeds through. So it's often why if you're what we would tend to refer to as a shoebox client, if you give us just all your bank statements loose, all your um, invoices and receipts and things like that, that is why it takes so long and your accountancy fees are probably higher than you want because we literally have to go through every single line of your bank statement for your entire, it could be your entire year. So if you were VAT registered, if you'd be a dentist, you won't be, but it could be quarterly when we do your management and stuff. So it is quite time consuming. So if you do that for us, if you make sure that we've got the narrative for every check and, you know, every, um, deposit that you're paying in it's going to save a massive amount of time and it's going to reduce your accountancy fees but yeah so it is literally as simple as that it's just more of a data entry and then as long as you've got your your little total at the bottom there it's going to highlight if you've missed anything out um you know it's take your time and it's um, a relatively simple thing to do so um there i hope that very quick run through of me going silent and clicking a lot has shown you how to do your bank reconciliation